Welcome to worship on this Sunday, October 3rd. This is World Communion Sunday, and we here at St. Mark's are actually having two worship services today. One is outside in our parking lot. Uh, so many people enjoyed the outdoor worship services that we've had during the past year that we decided to have another one while the weather is so beautiful outside in our parking lot. So we welcome you to our virtual service. And we want to tell you about an important love offering that we're taking today. It is a, an offering for hospital heroes. And we've decided to collect money for those people in hospitals that have worked so hard to keep people safe and well. And they're exhausted. There's so much uh, that has changed in the hospitals that there are places where they're not able to access food at their breaks. So we're taking money so that we can provide meals for hospital workers in our area as they need it in the next few weeks. So we invite you to go online, go online, and please make a donation to Hospital Heroes. And again, we thank you for that. We are strong when we pull together in this, and we thank you for doing that. Um, as we worship today, we're going to be in the fourth Sunday of a sermon series entitled, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. And we've looked at Zacchaeus, we've looked at what happened in the feeding of the 5,000, we've looked at Lazarus, and today we're going to journey with Mary Magdalene. And it's actually a scripture that you will recognize that is used on Easter morning. So this particular text is usually offered on Easter morning. We offer it today as part of our Tell Me the Stories of Jesus series, um, and it's very appropriate we have not been able to worship two Easter's ago. We weren't able to worship inside. Last Easter, we worshiped out in our parking lot. So it's important for us to hear this Easter story again because we are people of resurrection and every Sunday is a little Easter. So again, we thank you for worshiping with us on this special Sunday. I invite you to take a few deep breaths wherever you are, just in through your nose and out through your mouth. We do this to center ourselves, to remember again that that the living Christ, the presence of the living Christ is with us and changes what we do here in worship. So as you settle yourself, I invite you to join me as I pray for us this day. O oh God of all our days, we come to worship today with eager anticipation. We seek to know you, to see you, to touch you. Open our hearts, that we might experience you anew. Open our lives, that we may be faithful witnesses to your love and grace. May we, with shouts of joy, proclaim your steadfast, liberating love to all people, everywhere. Amen. And I invite you, as you're able, to stand for our gospel reading. We stand as a sign of respect. We stand as a sign of resurrection posture and receive these words from John 20, 1 through 18. And I invite you to listen with the ears of your heart and try to hear the message that God has for you this very day. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, 
sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word that is timeless. We thank you especially today for this word that we typically associate with Easter Sunday. And we thank you that we receive it this day, knowing that we are people of resurrection. That your resurrection changes everything about our lives, changes how we think, how we act, how we treat other people, changes our relationship with God. So thank you for the power of your spirit that is here to open us. And may we receive that power this day. In Christ's name, amen. In this particular gospel story, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus first because she chose to remain in the darkness. She sees Jesus first because she chose to remain in the darkness. Peter and the beloved disciple leave when they see the empty tomb. We understand that. But Mary stays. She stays there. She's bewildered. She's bereft. She cannot bring herself to go. As Pastor Nadia Boltz Weber puts it, she remains present to what is real, to what is actually happening. She remains present to what is real. She does so even when it feels unbearable to her. Now, I don't know about you, but there have definitely been times in my life that I have understood with greater clarity when I was in the darkness, the answers began to come for me out of the darkness. I began to feel hope and healing when I was willing to linger in those hard places and not push them and not run through them without gaining everything that I could from them. So lingering in the darkness brought hope. So Jesus, we know, often comes in our darkness. And sometimes, and I'll say this again for myself, it takes us a while to recognize him. So often in the Bible, when we look at the response of the disciples, we always look at the point where we are saying to ourselves, well, we would have never made that mistake or we would have understood, or we would have followed Jesus in a different way. But if we're being totally honest, even today, with what we do understand about Jesus, there are times when it's difficult for us to recognize him, because he doesn't look the way we expect him to look. He doesn't let us cling to any old ideas that we might have as he approaches our lives. He disappears sometimes as we reach out to grab him and take hold of him. And often, just like we see in this story with Mary Magdalene, he comes and he calls our names. And in that instant, we have a greater recognition. We know that it is a word specifically to us. So in this gospel, we've got these different individuals that are having profoundly different encounters with the risen Christ. The risen Christ, these encounters with him do not look identical. When Peter sees the empty tomb, he runs away. When the beloved disciple sees it, he believes without comprehension. When Mary sees it, as I have said, she weeps and waits for more. So what does this tell us? It tells us that when we come to the empty tomb, when we come to find Jesus, when we're seeking Jesus, uh, we bring ourselves just as we are. The good, 
the bad, the ugly, we bring it all. We don't shed baggage before we go to meet Jesus. We don't clean everything up so that when Jesus arrives, you know, we'll get some kind of particular blessing from doing that. We bring ourselves just as we are to the tombs of our lives, looking for the risen Jesus in the messiness of our lives. So what matters in the empty tomb is the hope that we need for our struggles and our losses and our traumas and our disappointments. It doesn't matter that we come in any particular way except that we come with hope. We're looking for, whether we recognize it or not, what Mary experiences here, which is an intimate encounter with Christ. And that involves a risk. That involves a risk. That involves hanging on to hope when all else fails. It involves hanging on to hope when we cannot see hope in anything around us. It involves the risk of sitting in the dark after everyone else has run away. It's a risk of turning towards someone who calls our name, recognizing Jesus for what Jesus brings, what Jesus offers, who Jesus is. All this is a risk. Now, we have come to a place in the history of St. Mark's where God is calling us to move forward and take a risk. I've talked about it the last three Sundays. We've been accepted and invited into what is known as the Change Makers Initiative. And our church joins with other churches throughout the United States as we are learning how to take Jesus into the world right where we are, right as we are. Those who are participating in the program now are going to be teaching us in the weeks and months ahead to look for the risen Christ, to be able to look with different eyes and see Jesus in places that we may never have seen Jesus before. And as I said earlier, we miss it often because Jesus doesn't look like what we think Jesus is going to look like. Jesus doesn't come in the people that we think Jesus is going to come in. Jesus comes when we open ourselves to see in a different way. Jesus is always with us, but we can miss him by thinking that there's some kind of formula that we have to follow. There is not a formula for us to follow other than being open and wanting to receive. There's a great poem that was written many years ago by a Welsh poet, and his name is R.S. Thomas, and the title of the poem is The Answer. The title of the appointment, the poem is The Answer. So hear this poem. There have been times when after long on my knees in a cold chancel, a stone has rolled from my mind. And I have looked in and seen the old questions lie folded and in a place by themselves like the piled grave clothes of love's risen body. There have been times when after long on my knees in a cold chancel, a stone has been rolled from my mind. You know, when Jesus speaks to Mary, at first she doesn't recognize him because she's not looking for him. She does not expect him to be alive. Of course, we get that intellectually. We get that, that she would not expect Jesus to be alive. But when Jesus calls her name, and in that moment of recognition, she understands that the unthinkable can now be thought. The impossible (laughs) has happened. And she completely goes into a place that is nothing like where she was before, but into a place with God that all things are possible. That's where God is calling us to be. That's exactly where God is calling us to to go, where all things are possible. Can you see possibilities? Can you be creative? Can you recognize Jesus in places that you've never seen him before? And here's the bottom line of all this for St. Mark's and everyone else that may be listening. What this scripture reminds us of is that it's the radical encounter, the radical personal encounter with God 
that starts this all in motion. Mary was willing to stay in the darkness. She was willing to linger where it hurt. She was willing to let her feelings and her emotions be present even when they felt negative. And sure, she wanted to run away from them. But in those moments of staying in there and believing somehow, unknown to her, God was still present. God indeed made God's self known. If we as a church are going to commit to change the world, change the world around us, change the world beyond us, change people we may never ever see personally, but if we're going to commit to moving out to change the world for Jesus Christ, then a fresh encounter, a fresh encounter with the risen Christ is going to make all the difference in the world. So it's an invitation for us again today. You know, faith and this risk that we take in believing in Jesus Christ, it moves us. It moves us beyond the normal realm of our own experience because God does not operate only within the limits of what we can see and what we can understand. Now, it is understandable that we are tired. It has been a difficult over a year now, many, many months of things being very difficult. We have admitted to one another. We've been honest and we've been upfront in saying that we haven't always felt the presence of God. We haven't always known where to look for God. Sometimes we felt like we were in survival mode ourselves. And what we could do is get up that morning and just move, move forward. But we're coming to the end of that. And I say that with all the hope and all the faith and all the belief that things are turning whether we see it and understand it or not. And in that turn, in that hope, in that power of God's Spirit, as God moves us forward, God invites us. Come to the tomb. Come to the empty tomb to remember that I'm there with a radical experience for you to have. Because the risen Christ will surround you. The risen Christ will call your name. The risen Christ will give you direction as we move into the sphere of the impossible. It's an exciting time. And our prayer is that in our minds, in our hearts, any stones that may be there, that the God of all things possible will remove those stones. That's who will be ready to embrace our future. May it be so. Amen.
We thank you for worshiping with us. We thank you because you are a gift. It is a gift for us to come together where it be virtually in our parking lot, in our sanctuary. We understand after this past 18 months that God surrounds us wherever we are. God pulls us together wherever we are. God shows God's self wherever we are. So go in this day knowing that hope is what you need and faith is what you need to move forward, to keep on taking the risk, to keep on believing that Jesus Christ has risen and in that place all things are possible. Go in peace and may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.